Today we're checking out Teleanimated, the evolution of Frankenstein's monster. I'm pretty excited for this one because I like scary stuff. It's not even Halloween, but I'm still digging that crazy stuff. But let's check this out right now. With scavenged parts, Dr. Frankenstein is ready to bring life to his creation. But yes, just sir. how has Universal's Frankenstein monster evolved and been revived? Let's dig in now. Animated. In the first film, Frankenstein's monster wears lifted boots and a padded suit with shortened sleeves and a tiny lapel. He has a prominent scar on his square-shaped head and a metal clasp covered by slick black like hair. He's gaunt with droopy eyelids, heavy eye bags, dark lips, and he has his signature neck bolts. Plus, in his dome, he's housing a deranged brain. This cobbled corpse accidentally runs amok, resulting in an angry mob oh, burning no. him down. Although the sequel They're shows he survived, him, he's battle damaged and his singed hair reveals more metal clasps. The dark blemishes around his eyes are gone, his scar is reshaped, and he's less gaunt. He's also taught how to speak by a blind hermit. Good. Good. Later, the monster insists <laughs> on that having split. a bride. This creation looks suspiciously like the novel's author, Mary Shelley. She sports a white dress and mummy wrappings, yeah, while her hot, upright bro. hairdo has added streaks. After this new creation rejects the monster, he chooses to self-destruct them both. The third film reveals the monster sleeping in a coma, although he's awoken by the oh, son of Frankenstein one. and Igor. He's no longer crispy, his shoes are simplified, and he's rocking a fuzzy vest with a loose sleeve shirt. His forehead scar is longer while his bangs are trimmed, and he's lost all power of speech. Interestingly, color footage of this outfit was shot. Igor manipulates Frankenstein's monster to eliminate his enemies, although the monster is stopped when he's like knocked into molten sulfur. And white, In the honest. fourth film, the monster is taller, lacks the fuzzy coat ensemble, and his sleeves and lapel are longer. His head is more square with rounded features, added moles, and a whiter scar. In this film, Igor scavenges the monster from hardened sulfur, and later has his own brain transplanted into the monster giving him unlimited power. Yes, I will take okay. over I do not want to see the outcomes of that unlimited God, power. he loses his sight, then clumsily perishes in a fire. The monster in the follow-up is somehow found frozen and then quickly released. He's more rotund with a circular head, less droopy eyes, and has one less mole. Although he occasionally looks young and chiseled, there's also no mention of the Igor brain swap. I be the inside. monster is what given a power upgrade and faces a furry foe, but they both get washed away. The sequel finds the monster frozen again. He's gained height, has a longer head, droopier eyes, and an extended scar. Once more, he powers up, only to drown They just in keep making sand. him less in human the each time. After his mud bath, he's given another jump start, but is taken down by reused footage. In the Abbott and Costello crossover, his master Dracula unboxes him. This monster's forehead scar is more realistic, the clamps more okay. protruding, his neck bolts and mole are higher, and he has like lengthier little sideburns. Man. Oh, and he can talk, again! Hello, master. Although, when chasing two dim-witted fools, he fumbles into a fire and falls in a lake. Frankenstein, the true story's creation, looks beautiful and dresses in fitted no. fineries. But he mostly wears a brown jacket, That's not Frankenstein. and tall boots. Notably, this creation slowly starts decaying. Our Adam is also given an Eve, who wears elegant dresses to hide her neck scars. Even she but has the a monster weird loses nose. interest in her pretty swiftly. In the end, creation and creator are given peace in an avalanche. In Monster Force, a beefy Frank has purpley skin, shaved sides, and yellow eye whites. I like he the purple a green man. overcoat and a yellow tee paired with brown pants. But nah, pants. this stuff is too this extra. This monster can shoot lasers. While his bride has added neck bolts, wears a pink and black ensemble, and still isn't fond of Frank. The monster in the miniseries, House of Frankenstein, is found frozen and mostly looks like a decaying dad with an added hunch and is outfitted in a fresh blue shirt and black shoes. This ghoul is, for some reason, sought by a mean old bat. The chipmunk's crossover monster wears a green jacket, dark brown pants, thick platform shoes, and has sharp canine teeth. This creature eventually becomes a bus driver and is taught how to speak by his chipmunk friends. Oh. Ben Helsing's reboot monster has pale lavender colored skin with added mechanical parts, electric domes, and he wears a ragged duster. Also, his brain cap can pop off and he has an electrical blast. 
Dracula intends to use this monster's life force to birth his offspring, but Van Helsing has other plans. And with countless other appearances, let us know if you want to see more animations like of OG Frankenstein's ones. monster. Don't forget to check- Alright, but that looks like the video, the evolution of Frankenstein's monster. That was a fucking crazy one. I obviously like the older ones because they look more classic. I, I don't know why. I just like classic. I don't like it when stuff get too extra. And I guess that's everyone else too. It's like every, every TV show after the third season gets extra. And that's why people stop liking it. Just keep it simple. That's it, man. But let me know what you guys think about the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.